cowboy. All right. Welcome back to the Gristled Up Podcast. As always, I'm Cody. I'm Caleb. And I'm not Sean. <laughs> Sean was not able to make it here tonight, so we're going to keep chugging right along. Yep. Yep. We've got uh, our good buddy back from Paranormal Patio. And things are going to get weird again. You guys want an exclusive? I'm always down. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, that's uh, the exclusive. That's what I've been working on for the last month, probably. Wow. I wasn't expecting that kind of news. I know. I like it. Wowzers. Yeah. I am. Do you ever wonder if someone's dreaming of you? Who wouldn't be dreaming of me? I'd be I'd... more suspicious if someone said they never dreamed about me. <laughs> Come on. Get out of here. <laughs> Just buy someone dreaming about me right now. Me. I'm, Another I'm thing uh, that's kind of thinking about that, you know, there's somebody that's dreaming of you right now. Probably, yeah. Almost guaranteed. Somebody that I ran into at a mall two hours away from here or something, you know? Uh, you're going on the collective, like, subconscious thing? like yeah. uh, Every time you see a face. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about that. Because so I've had really vivid dreams about people that I do absolutely have zero memory of ever meeting. Like, Especially when I was younger, mm-hmm. when I hadn't met a lot of people. Like now, I can't yeah. tell you how many people I've met, right. you know, as an adult. But like, as a kid, I was really poor. I didn't go anywhere. You know, I was lucky to go to Walmart once every couple of weeks. So the way I always heard it was... You didn't have to meet an individual or anything. It was just, just see him. lock eyes or yeah, just yeah. run into him. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with the concept. I just don't know if I buy it. I, I just go buy it. Just <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, the human brain is really extraordinarily more capable creatively than what we give credit for. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, I mean, to go on that, the difference between, like, hot and cold or, like, spicy sour that's a crazy thought the other day I was using uh, I was trying to switch my faucet's one of those it's got the fucking it's not too different all in one yeah Yeah. and I I got to that sweet spot where it was starting to get cold and it's hotter than fuck (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's what made me think of this because then you know like you mentioned those uh, was it the Takis they're Mm -hmm. actually sour yeah and you didn't know that no, they're not hot. Yeah, they use an ingredient really? yeah, that citric makes acid. it. Hmm. They're actually sour, but because of the color and the smell, everyone it, just your their brain, brain their s- brain just defaults huh. it to it's spicy. They're really not that spicy. I mean, there's some spice in them, right? But it's mostly sour. Really? Same with flaming hot. Ever hmm. since you I told that. me that, whenever I've had talkies, you sit and think about it long enough. Yeah, it almost is like yeah, that is. Yeah, it's got a wing. It's too. got a tart. Once you yeah. once you know, you can't stop tasting it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. True story. So it's like cilantro being good or tasting like dish soap. That's a biological. <laughs> thing. I don't think it's the same. You call it what you want. I don't Matt. know if it came with age or if I'm just <laughs> what, but I had some uh, some fish tacos recently from the Mexican place, and they had cilantro. Yeah. Cilantro? Yeah. Like I lost. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> yeah, they had cilantro on them, and that, they were banger with it. Hmm. Yeah, I never knew that about the Takis and Flaming Hot. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, it wasn't, what, maybe four or five years ago, it seems, that they started doing the Flaming Hot with uh, lime. Mm. I don't think they even changed it. I think they're the same. They're just slides. There might be like a lime, or... like a lime extract or something that they put a minuscule, mostly unnoticeable amount just in. Just to say that it's probably more of like a scent. I think, mm. like, yeah, that's fair. just again, it all play. Your nose is so important in flavor detection. Oh yeah, you never know how important until you're so congested you can't yeah. do anything. And and your uh, your smell memory is the strongest like sensory memory that you have. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, I can still smell my great grandpa's garage. Like, if I think about it, I can smell it. I 
There's, there's a list of other things. <laughs> <laughs> that we're not going to get into, but, like, um, e- even if I try to think back to, like, music, I can't really hear it. I just know how the words go. Mm-hmm. Or the rhythm of something. But I can think about a smell, and I can exactly relive it. I, my uh, grandpa's lawnmower, I always used to ride around on the mower with him, and I remember the smell of the... The fumes from it, and then like uh, my dad's truck, he's got a '79 pickup. I, I vividly, anytime yeah. I catch a faint smell, that I'm like, "Where's that coming from?" Dad? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. The human mind, man. It's it's a tricky thing. We don't even have really like a basic understanding of, yeah, you know, and it controls everything. You know, we're just meat sacks just <laughs> walking around and like big old taters with arms just floating through the know? air. But when you think about it, and I, I'm I'm weird, you know, you guys know. I'm weird. <laughs> like sometimes when I'm just walking, I'll be like, This is fascinating. <laughs> I just look over there and think I'm gonna walk over there and my body just does it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I never look at things like that, but that is so accurate. It's like, oh, oh shit, I'm gonna have to breathe here in a second. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> you ever now get caught cool. up in uh, thinking about breathing, and then you're like, you, you try forget. have to remember how to do it. You're like, yeah. And then you pay attention to it, and you're like, calm down, calm down, calm down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot how to breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's wild, man. It's really crazy. And that's why. When people discount things like lucid dreaming and natural projection, it's like I have a hard time just writing things off, anything off, just because of things like that. Like the human brain is just fascinating. That's valid. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Like I've never consciously grown hair, but you know it's doing it because it thinks my face is gonna get cold, or I'm just too lazy to shave. But it has to grow. That's fair. You know, so it's, it's wild. I wonder what Larry's issue is then. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lair Bear. <laughs> Everybody that's watching this is like, who's Lair Bear? Don't worry about it. <laughs> when he watches it, he'll understand. <laughs> Poor hairless bastard. <laughs> You're not even a man, Larry! <laughs> what cracks me up is like, Looking at you, you think that, you know, you got a sweater on under that. Nothing. <laughs> it all lands right here. Like, uh, I just brought that up the other day, like, at work. Somebody was like, oh, yeah, you hairy bastard. And I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> Look at this. I pulled my pant leg up, and it's like, you know, it's like Shit. my hand. <laughs> like, I have hair, but it's just not thick, you know. <laughs> and then you have, like, unassuming people that are really hairy. You know, I don't want to. I'll call him out. Scooter. Oh my god, it's yeah. Bald, clean shaven. <laughs> he got a walking on. Angora sweat. <laughs> like Scott Howe. There you go. I'll, I know he'll watch. Or he will be watching, so I'll throw him out there too. It just depends on if he's watching it on his daughter's channel or his. <laughs> we'll explain that later. I'm not sure I want you to. <laughs> I think the mystery might be better than the truth. <laughs> I'm sure you can come up with a better story than what I that is. Yeah, it's just going right now. <laughs> I don't even have to consciously do it. I've already de- developed an entire plot line for that season. Damn it, Scott. <laughs> anyway. On to the next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, the la- what, what the, the last video, the video before when you guys were outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember I commented on the video on YouTube. Uh, if ever, yeah. if ever there were an episode <laughs> that I could have contributed to, that was it. <laughs> Missed my shot. I mentioned it to Cody, and Cody's like, "I'll see what he's doing." I'm like that cornbread mafia thing. <laughs> Finally, we you have were somebody so to- off course. <laughs> <laughs> the Amish are running money laundering. <laughs> Through what restaurant was it? Long John, 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 John Silver. Silver. Okay, you're combining like eight different things here. Is okay. there not a cornbread mafia? About it though? Okay, cornbread mafia was a bunch of farmers, I think, in the '80s that were growing pop. 
Right. That, it had nothing to do with Amish. We cleared the air on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Figured that one out later on. The Long John Silver's thing, there, there's been a lot of conjecture about them being a, a money laundering front. Just because See? they're always empty, so, but they're always empty. <laughs> I was not wrong, I just didn't have anything right. <laughs> 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 really should have read the study material before yeah. we that one. Yeah, but when you said cornbread mafia, I I fuck came up out of my seat. I was like, God damn, he's gonna talk about it. Can't talk about the cornbread mafia. <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. I was like, Oh, thank God, he's still alive. <laughs> I don't mess around. That was like, uh, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was a Midwest thing too, man. It was like it Kentucky, Tennessee. Kansas, Nebraska, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Oh, shit. <laughs> this oh, was bigger than we thought. Dude, yeah. It was millions and millions uh-huh. of dollars. Um, I would put it, I'm pretty sure, total value wise, I could be way off base. I could be pulling the Caleb. Um, You're going to be accurate. I would think More it accurate. would be a close behind the bluegrass conspiracy which is where all these ex-cops were running coke in from Brazil hmm. into Kentucky oh, wow. and fueling the entire like drug epidemic of the 80s. So Kentucky really is a fascinating the co- place. The cocaine bear thing? Oh, yeah. yes, yes. The dude yeah. who jumped out of the plane with all the coke was an ex-cop who was in, in the ranks of this uh, hmm. mafia deal. Well, well, it wasn't mafia. I'll be. Yeah. Uh. I saw that bear at a museum, too, by the way, but I can't for the life of me remember what museum it was. Cut that shit. That's fucking thick. <laughs> did you watch the movie? I did. Was it, it was it better than I expected. It was bad, but it was better than I thought it was going to be. I figured I'd turn it off as soon as I turned it on. I figured it was going to suck, time. but I it was still actually funny. Hmm. Well, I have to watch it then. Did you watch Iron Claw yet? The... Von Eric's? No, I haven't watched it yet. Fantastic. I imagine it's great. You know? Oh, yeah. I'm a Zac Efron fan, and I don't care. (laughs) So, Cody told me, (laughs) not knowing the background of it, it probably wouldn't be as good. Honestly, I completely disagree because totally unexpected on everything. I'm curious to watch it and see how true to life it is. Right, and see, that's something it might be, I don't know how accurate it was in your eyes, but yeah, that's something, for me... Everything I've seen, I'm like, holy shit, can't believe that happened. Mm-hmm. It was Where one of those, like, like it was, but the movie was based more off, like, the highlights of what happened. Oh, sure. Okay. Right. I mean, it was and there was a decades. lot more that went on. I remember but, being a little kid when uh, Texas Tornado died. And, like, <laughs> I had, you probably don't remember. You might remember. I probably wasn't born yet. There were, it was a big deal. There were these little, um, (laughs) there were these little fold up TV stands that had like the legs folded. They were like two U shaped legs and it was like a TV tray and you could like eat off of it, you know, but it was only like this high off the floor. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like you always see, yeah, that cocksucker is pissing me off. It's got me a couple times. I was trying to ignore it for professionalism, but now that we're talking about it. Anyway, so I had, really professional here. I had several of those trays. Like, I had a real Ghostbusters one, a Ninja Turtles one, and I had a WWF one. And it had the Texas Tornado on it. And I got it, and like three weeks later, he killed himself. I was like, shit. <laughs> you know, I didn't have any understanding of the concept of suicide at that point. Right. But, you know, as a kid, I just think he died. But, mm-hmm. you know. Yes. I still have one of those. I think I have the Ninja Turtle one still. It was probably worth a pretty penny. Yeah, you know, it's kind of beat up. I, we were rough on them. My cousin and I would play with toys on them and stuff, too. And You'd still probably be surprised. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, because I've never seen... I mean, my parents have TV trays, but they're the... I mean, they're yeah, the like the tall ones. Like you put at the couch or whatever. This yeah. is for kids whose parents were too poor to have enough furniture to sit on. <laughs> You're gonna so sit you got to sit on the floor. On the floor. Yeah. Sit on the floor. We're going to slide this table to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> it, man. They were small enough that you could put them in the sink, but big enough that you could put like a, a full plate on them. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. just the right size. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, I don't remember the style you're talking about, but I do remember like going to my aunt's or something. We had just the little trays. They were like red or blue or like whatever. Plastic ones? Because I know I they came right. out with plastic ones later, like, uh, well, after 2008. 
Well, I'm there might have been some before that. that. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I just remember because I bought one for my oldest, and he was born in 2008. So, did you not have furniture either? I had such <laughs> no. I had such uh, great memories of all the times I had one of those trays that cost me. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to instill that into somebody else. Well, it actually it totally went unappreciated. <laughs> It's funny that you mentioned You're it still like sitting there. <laughs> but I still use poor it. shit. Nobody run out of half a cat now. Priest of Mount Four. Yeah. I don't remember what else you guys talked about though, and like every time that there was like one of these insane uh, theories, I'm just banging on that table. Ah, that's fine. <laughs> We did a WWE match at Quartz on the table a couple times. The camera was mounted on there. We had a couple elbow drops. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were being serious. I was like, I was gonna say, I, I don't know who we is, but I would have at least one. I would have appreciated it. a fucking phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb comes out in a luchador mask and a singlet, just ready to oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, we talked about the uh, Cornbread Mafia, and then we discussed the uh, the man that everybody dreams of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. There's actually, I watched, uh, I think it was an episode of The Y Files on YouTube where he just dove deep into that. That's really fascinating. Which, honestly, until Sean mentioned it to me, I didn't know anything about it, which I still haven't looked much into it. Not saying that that would change a damn thing based on my... Cornbread Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't too off base on that one, but yeah, that's uh, pretty wild. They, the guy who first uncovered it through like therapy with the person or whatever uh, got in touch with some other psychiatrists or psychologists, whichever the flavor. <laughs> and uh, yeah, before long it had snowballed. And, like all these mental health professionals were like yeah we come across this all the time that like it's crazy and they collated just stacks and stacks of uh almost identical hand-drawn hmm. things that's nuts yeah it's wild man and that that y files y files is another youtube channel that's uh it's not just conspiracy stuff it's weird stuff too that's why i watch it but uh <laughs> <laughs> but he it's it's stupid i hate it but the content's good he has a CGI goldfish beside him that talks as his co-host. I hate awesome. it. I hate that fucking fish. His name is Hecklefish. I hate Hecklefish. But the content is usually pretty solid. His research is good. And I'm sure he has a team of people at this point because he's one of those multi-million subscriber guys. But... Um, yeah, that's a good episode to watch. Get that. I got a fucking hair on my face. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> we won't have a goldfish if we decide to do that, but we can just a CGI nut sack. <laughs> yeah, just put dude's mouth on the sack there. No, the Illuminati, that was something we discussed. Yeah, so the Illuminati. The, <laughs> what did it end up being? Was it Detroit or Denver? You were saying Detroit, but it's yeah, actually Denver. Denver. Okay. The, yeah, the Denver airport. So, the Illuminati, there was a real secret society back in, I think, like the early 1800s that went by the name the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. um, nice to have a little background there. But it, they didn't rule the world from behind the scenes or anything like that. So, right. they weren't as big as they were today. Somehow, yeah, somehow <laughs> that name has persisted <laughs> through time. And, like, you know, the average Joe on the street knows it. Like, yeah, the Illuminati, they control everything. But um, I don't think that's it. And I'm in some Facebook group. <laughs> it's, uh, I never look at it. I just joined it because it was funny at the time. It was some Illuminati thing. But it, yeah, they're not controlling anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's that's sad. <laughs> but I will recommend another piece of media here. Netflix just put out a new docuseries last week that I've been looking forward to for a long time. It's called The Octopus Murders. Hmm. I've seen, seen that. I didn't watch it, but i seen... Uh, watch it. Because it's uh, the story of this guy. He was an investigative journalist. His name is Danny Casolaro. And 
somehow he gets put on to this wild case uh, where <laughs> he is being pulled in like 80 different directions, which I think I relate to it a lot, but <laughs> he uh, is really close to figuring out the whole shebang. And he's got one more interview that he's going to do, and then he's found dead in his hotel bathtub. Hmm. And <laughs> he has names in his paper. That damn bug. Did you hear it? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, <laughs> my ear's hot. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. that fucker red? Fuck <laughs> red. <laughs> so he has these names that he calls out. They call it the octopus because there's eight people that are pulling the strings for everything. Hmm. And it's really fascinating. I think I'm going to have to resubscribe to Netflix so I can watch it. Definitely. It's really good. And they did a good job. I thought it was ballsy because a lot of those guys are still alive. And I was surprised that somebody pulled the trigger on that at the old Big Inn. But they did. Hmm. And uh, it was really, really well done. This, it, the premise of it is this guy gets access to all the old files from Castellero. And he's, like, going through and trying to contact people and see who's still alive and, like, piece it all together since Danny couldn't. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Huh. Yeah, so I that'll shed that. a little light because I think some of the, the names that are implied in the octopus definitely had a lot more power than anybody I've ever met with any ties to the Illuminati. Really? For sure. For sure. Hmm. For sure. We talking... Like, big name individuals. The most prolific would be uh, George Bush, oh. H. Bush, not W. <laughs> <These are dead>. <laughs> <laughs> w. No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. But, <laughs> and his, Bush's dad, like, so George Bush the first. I don't know. Um, One of them bushes. He, I think he laid a lot of groundwork ahead of George H. Bush. I hmm. just I don't want to say much more. No, because I might not make it home. <laughs> There's a lot of people that watch this. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and that was that was the thing about them putting that out. I was like, "There's no way it's going to be so watered down, mm -hmm. censored, and nope." It was pretty good. Wow. They didn't pull very many punches. There was a lot of things they didn't talk about, but, I mean, you couldn't do that whether you were implicating somebody or not. Mm -hmm. It is crazy that any time there's a documentary, well, I shouldn't say any time, but a lot of times when a documentary is about to come out or, like, the people, Paul Walker and Chester uh, Bennington. Bennington, how they're getting ready to blow the whistle on all this stuff going on and then suicide or hmm. hell just random deaths or disappearances happen yeah and it's, it's like, not just people that are gonna say something or do something mm -hmm. it's people who are changing the landscape of society like uh, uh, the brain fart uh, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana mm. was changing the youth concept of like, you know, fuck you, we're tired of taking this. Yeah. And then he's dead. And I, I don't think he killed himself. Well, no. If you do any kind of research on that, there's no way he did. So, he, man, the CIA runs deep. There's a lot of people. Don't that, listen, wiretap. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> I've shut the mics off for a, a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people that have disappeared and and have you know killed themselves that were really influential to oh, yeah. the youth, especially because you can't maintain power when all of your peers are seventy plus years old mm -hmm. and you're counting on instilling fear into the next oh, generation. Yeah, it's easier to control a feared country than it is. Uh, That's why we're always at war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a conspiracy for you. Almost every war that we have been involved in, definitely in our lifetime, but even before, almost every one, we have supplied arms to both sides of the conflict before it started, sowed the seeds of discontent, and swept in for a victory. <laughs> Vietnam 
was started because some guy claimed that he was on the whatever boat it was, and they were fired upon by some like hundred some people in Vietnam. Hmm. He wasn't even there. Never even happened. It was supposed to be a retaliatory <laughs> action that it was retaliating against nothing. Something I can't ever figure out is why uh, firemen are so stereotypically like getting cats out of trees. Oh man, I don't know. I think it's um, almost every almost every movie, like old timey movie that the fire or department like, uh, like animation. Yeah, I always see it. In, mm. I don't know. Maybe it's to just like the police need one of those. Because it instills this, like, they appreciation in the fire. No, it's not the same. <laughs> oh, I agree. It's not the same. I'm just saying. They well, got donuts. That's like, a kid sees a, a fireman pulling a cat out of a tree, they know this is a this is a person who's going to do good things. They see a cop eating a donut. They <laughs> Look at that bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Wish <laughs> I had a donut. He ain't going to share it with me. <laughs> if the stereotype was cops sharing donuts with other people, you'd have a point. We should have had Matt on for this discussion. As an ex-cop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I don't know, man. But it is... It had to have happened like, like, in an old cartoon. or It's something that's persisted through time. That, that must have been something that used to happen a long time ago a lot. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> had the equipped ladders but firemen. I, but it, <laughs> that can't be. Because like, you look at old barns and stuff. They all have haylofts. They didn't have the powered equipment that we have today. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, people had fucking ladders. Uh, according you to can't your, climb to the top without a ladder. According okay? to any time you talk to your grandpa about loading hay, I just threw it on up there. <laughs> 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 You're five foot flat. You didn't throw it 40 foot in the air. Calm down, Gramps. <laughs> I can barely get it on a trailer, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I ain't tossing that sucker to the moon. Yeah, I don't know, though. That is a weird thing that's just hung around forever. Yeah. yeah, it's strange. It is. I don't know what made me even think of it, but... <laughs> it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Have you guys seen Suburban Commando with Hulk Hogan? No. Where mm-hmm. he's uh, he's like a space marine of some sort, and uh, he gets he blows up this, this ship that's got this bad guy on it, and he gets reassigned, and he gets mad, and he, in his like, futuristic armor, like punches the control box on his spaceship as he's flying and tears it up. He's got to make an emergency landing to make repairs. (laughs) So he lands on Earth to make these repairs. And uh, Christopher Lloyd is in this movie. And uh, he ends up renting the garage of Christopher Lloyd and Shelley Duvall. And they get entangled into this whole mess. But he is trying to assimilate into society Hulk Hogan, the space bounty hunter. Shep Ramsey is his name in this, <laughs> this movie. And uh, this girl's like, uh, crying at this tree. And she's like, my cat, my cat. And like he pulls the branch down. <laughs> and she's like, that's not my cat. And he lets it go. And it's just... <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like something you see in a Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> very, very. I mean, I hate to discredit any work that Mel Brooks has ever done by comparing it to that. <laughs> Wonderful film, <laughs> known as Suburban Commando. Everybody should watch it once, though. Like it's good. He was a horrible actor. Uh, yeah, and a horrible person. Well, and yeah. a horrible wrestler. But oh, he had two moves: the leg drop. And that was his biggest. <laughs> From the top room. No, nope. the big boot. <laughs> the big boot and the leg drop. That's it. Well, he did that weird little face wipe thing whenever he was. Everybody did that back in the day, though. Yeah, but not like Hulk Hogan. <sighs> awful. Just awful. I'm not saying I like him, but... <laughs> and then you, yeah, then you find out like he's a racist and... He's just a real piece of shit. Married a woman after his wife left him. It looks <laughs> just like his daughter, who was like 17 at the time. A little weird, though. A little weird. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I'm not saying he's a pedophile, but he probably is. Yeah. Conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I looked this up for this show. A conspiracy by definition implies. God damn it, why you gotta one, keep checking me on my shit? <laughs> one group of people of at least two come together to 
perpetrate something illegal and hide it from everybody else. Holy smokes. So, and I do this too, think about like the conspiracy the theory of Long John that. Silver's is a front for some, you know, mafia activity or whatever. It's not really a conspiracy. It's just a wild theory, I guess. Like, I don't know what the terminology would be, but it ruined wild me. Wild theory. It ruined me on this too, because I do it all the time, you know. Make conspiracy but, theories or wild theories? I call something a conspiracy that's oh, not by okay. definition a conspiracy. Mm. And then some things that people assume are conspiracies, where people have come together to do something illegal, um, turn out to be true. You know, and I think that's sowed a lot of discontent with people in the government. Like, why well, we don't trust the governments because they say, "Oh, we've never done that," and then you find out, "Yeah, they did." <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, you did. You absolutely did. <laughs> we definitely didn't. Like, kidnap mental patients and give them high doses of LSD and try to control their minds. We did. Then we burned all the paperwork. But we did do it. You didn't, another you didn't know about that one? MK Ultra. Uh, no. Yeah. MK ah, Ultra. Damn. I'm sorry. I keep burping up garlic bread and sketty. That's my well, I thought I smelled garlic when I got here. I'm you just glad it's not your mom's spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> or there's vomit on your sweater or nothing. That's that's one way to take that. <laughs> but this man's ass after his mom's spaghetti <laughs> is on a different level. It is. I would admit that. I hate to embarrass you in front of all your listeners, but it's a rough time. <laughs> Trace your sketties fire. <laughs> <laughs> so is my ass afterwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of blue rag challenges thrown down. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, was, it was bad. I can't remember if that was just you or... I know Sean had to deal with that a little bit. Poor fella. <laughs> I feel bad for anybody who did. Yeah, no kidding. Or does. Yeah, I'd, I don't know what Danielle does different. It tastes damn near the same, but it don't give me the same side effects. So. I call that a win for humanity. <laughs> yeah, for your sake, yes. <laughs> Especially tonight. Yeah, you're trapped. <laughs> I can get out of here in a hurry. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know why firefighters save cats from trees in every piece of media that they've ever been in. I don't know. There's probably a cat in a tree in backdraft. <laughs> <laughs> no one's called it out, but it's there. Legend has it. <laughs> yeah, legend has it. I have no idea. It is weird, though. It's one of those weird things that just hung around forever. Yeah. Could you imagine the media that comes from, like, if... If a superhero movie actually happened in real life, like, they always, something always happens. There's a fight scene, they just blast through, like, a like an office building, or, like, an apartment building yeah, or yeah. something. And most of them include Stan Lee just standing in the background, mopping a floor. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's like, huh? <laughs> but I can't imagine either that or they always do the... The scene where his back's to him, they got he's got the earbuds in, they just he's like wax on the floor or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was that movie? Will Smith and Charlie's the Round Hancock. Oh, that was they cool. kinda did like a realistic take on that. Like he goes to prison for all the damage yeah. that he's caused from oh, like really? saving the world. I enjoyed that movie. Yeah, it was actually I never watched it. It was kind of refreshing it's for a superhero good. movie. It, I mean it's Isn't not, he like an alcoholic or something? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, because he's like he's invincible. He's really old, you know, he's just been miserable his whole life. He tries to save everybody and, like, they just blame him for problems hmm. and, like, he, he's always drunk because of that. And then... I'm going to watch that tonight. That's it's not bad. That's a pretty decent... It, what I enjoy about it is, like, uh, when they try to uh, get him to be a good guy, which, you know, he's always tried to mm -hmm. do the right thing, but, like, he saves somebody... So Jason Bateman, and, right? Yeah, Jason Bateman, he like tries to tame him down and he saves somebody and they're like, oh my gosh, thank you. And he's like, <laughs> like, he just, like doesn't yeah. know what to say. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's pretty, you haven't seen that movie? Mm -hmm. But you knew what I was talking about. That's weird. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing previews and stuff. It's worth watching for sure. It's strange how that works too. Not to go on another thing about brains, but... Oh, like, uh... Did that come out in, like, 2008, probably? I don't know. 
somewhere around there. I don't know why I remember certain movie dates when they're released. I don't... <laughs> That's a he thinks he thing. does, but he's usually wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, it came out 2008. Fact 2002. check. <laughs> Fact check on this shit. Just because. Because we have technology. Uh huh. So Russia about took over today. Oh yeah, I was asleep. What happened? Ha! 2008. Holy shit! shit. Off right on the money. Even a broken clock's right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> I have never in my life heard that before. Seriously? That's never. like the oldest expression oh on the planet. Oh my god, that Since is Since they have been in clocks, people have been saying that. <laughs> that and, uh, and I can't remember which episode it was. Whenever we filmed with Court, it was either the first or the second one. Uh, oh, yeah, it was the first one because we offered him a check of like $137 or something <laughs> for his building. He said the only way to eat elephants one bite at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that I've either. Heard that one. <laughs> That's great. Oh man. <laughs> you just made his day. He did. You're welcome. <laughs> one thing I always remember about you is whenever we were working together and you said you had a doctor's appointment at two thirty one day. And I kinda looked at you and I'm like just kinda went about it and you're like I just sit there you're like two thirty. It's like, like why are you saying that? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what are you... How... Like, tooth hurty. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good dad joke. Dude, my favorite thing, whenever we first started working together, was how like I would talk about something from like 10 years ago and explain it to you like you'd never heard of it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sit with me, young child. <laughs> so Capri Suns were these little yeah. small patches. He did that all the time. And it's like something that I obviously know. Speaking of Capri Suns, <laughs> were you up there today when uh, Jay pulled out his lunch bowl? He had it yesterday, but he never oh. got to eat it. He pulled out a Capri Sun and a lunch bowl, and someone's like, What'd you do? You steal from your kids? He's like, fuck them kids. <laughs> and he just rips open the package and starts eating. Sounds like shit. So what, what were you saying about Russia? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Big oh, tangent. yeah. Facebook and all that crashed. Oh. Uh, Russia was taking over. It was weird. Cause, yeah, I woke up and uh, <laughs> I had a message from somebody on Facebook. I don't even remember who it was now. And I went to open it and it wouldn't open. I'm like, what the hell? So I closed it, opened it back up, tried to get on the Facebook, not the messenger, but like on Facebook, and it had me log in, and I'm like, I haven't logged into Facebook in like 10 years. It's just always on. <laughs> I don't so know how to do this anymore. Like, I hope this is my password. <laughs> I put it in, and it's like, uh, you need to have two-step verification turned on, mm -hmm. because like, people, and uh it wouldn't. It couldn't even send me the verification code. Hmm. It, it's, it's giving me an error, and I was like, "What the hell?" So then I got on Reddit, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> Met is down." All right. I did find it kind of funny that after hearing about all that stuff, uh, I got on Twitter because. <laughs> Watch the bag. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a good douche every now and then. But I got on Twitter, and that's where I get a bunch of my sports news and stuff. And Elon Musk had one tweet, twit, tw what do you want to call it? <laughs> I said, if you're reading this, it's because our servers didn't crash. <laughs> like, he is dude. so petty for someone who is the second richest person in the world. No shit. Some of the stuff that I see come out of him, I'm like, huh. It is funny. Though. It's funny. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. like, it's, it's ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> I'll just look at it. God damn you, Long. <laughs> Chill out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's getting sued for like $1.32 million or something like that from some engineers that he fired when he took over Twitter and didn't pay him any severance. Like, come on, man. <laughs> you can't pay them severance? <laughs> They're like, asking for uh, one 1,362nd of <laughs> what money you have in your pocket. <laughs> Let alone what you've got in bank accounts in, across the world. In the wise words of Jay Lamron, fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. <laughs> Dude, it's ridiculous. 
We we were looking up one day <clears throat> what it would take for Elon Musk to spend all of his money. It's impossible. Basically, the only way he could do it is if he wrote a check for it. <laughs> like, that's... Yeah, basically, for the rest of his lifetime, that is the only way he could do it. The obvious, like, first choice for me would be buy everyone on the planet a new vehicle, but there's not enough vehicles to spend his money on. Hmm. I have... N- yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> He'd have to overpay by 400% on every car that he bought for everybody on the planet. I don't care if that $1,500 LeSabre would cost him half a million. <laughs> I got a car. Do <laughs> you have any real weird theories for us? Ooh. Like, just one of your favorite off-the-wall ones hmm. before we... Well, hmm. If you would have asked me that, like, before that episode came out with you guys mm-hmm. outside, I would have said the Long John Silvers thing. <laughs> but, uh... I don't I'm know. glad to know that it's something. Yeah, yeah. I told you I wanted to ask him something that stumped him. Never yeah. would have thought it no, would be that. That's <laughs> it, man, because there's so many wild, crazy things. Okay, I got one. It just came back. Yes. Rugrats, the cartoon, mm-hmm. Nickelodeon. Ooh, I like this theory. You know this one? Yes. That all of the babies are actually dead and they're in Angelica's mind. I have heard that. Yeah. And she is suffering from PTSD and she imagines that all the babies are still alive and getting into adventures. Yeah. I really and she's like neglected that neglected by her parents who are, you know, always busy and they're mm-hmm. like the mom's always on the phone with Jonathan <laughs> and like probably having an extramarital affair. And the dad is always just like trying to keep up. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that might be it. That I like those kinds of theories. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely doesn't like like Scott Howe is not going to give a shit about the Rugrats conspiracy theory. <laughs> but like people of of our generation, oh, yeah. who watched a lot of Rugrats. Well, my nice. daughter actually watches Rugrats now. Oh, whatever she, nice. Like, she saw it pop up on Paramount or whatever. She's like, babies. I'm like, oh, I'm going to blow your <laughs> yes. mind in like 10 years. <laughs> yes. Well, that's like the Frozen theory. The whole reason why it came out was to distract everybody so Disney could destroy all the paperwork from where Walt, Walt Disney's Disney. Frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when you Google Disney Frozen, it automatically used to come up with the the theory of conspiracy theory of yeah. Walt Disney freezing his body. Son of a gun. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, they, they named came it, out. With they it. named it Frozen so that it would. When you search now Frozen Disney on Google, it's that movie. We're gonna have to do an episode just on Disney. Dude, Disney. you could because there's some seriously deranged, oh, yeah. depraved Disney shit. <laughs> I love. Like it. back in the '90s, all the cartoons had dicks in them. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen a majority of that. Yeah, yeah. those are <laughs> little mermaid. It was like. In the trident or whatever. Yeah, well, and the guy, the preacher that marries him on the boat's got a fucking woody the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) His pants visibly sticking out. What's this kid movie missing? Uh, Dummy dick. (laughs) He's gonna need some dicks. Uh, There was an episode of SpongeBob that one of the fish that was randomly in the background literally just had a dick drawn on him. (laughs) (laughs) I pulled it up, shit you not. It's in there. Like, <laughs> I get, because, yeah, we have that same sense of humor, mm-hmm. you know? But, like, if I were animating a cartoon that millions of kids were going to see, I think I'd dial it back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? But they're probably getting paid, like, $2 an hour to draw a movie that's going to make, you know, 600 and some million. Right. And I'd probably be a little upset, too, you know? But he took the job. Yeah. So, like, he knew... <laughs> Settle. That's those pay me two bucks an hour. Just gonna put a dick somewhere in just this movie. Just gonna do it. Gonna do it. Wait till you see the VHS cover, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Millions of dicks. <laughs> <not supposed to>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. But you could do a lot on Disney. Um, I was just listening to uh, my friend Nathan's uh, live stream that he they do every week uh, last night, and. Uh, Walt Disney came up in uh, a whole other totally unrelated thing that uh, these guys out in Arizona, it was like some of the first alien contact stories that came out. Uh, The topic was flying saucers and four guys named George, because it was George Van Tassel, 
who was brought in on Operation Paperclip from Nazi Germany to start NASA, essentially. Um, George Hunt Williamson, George Adamski. Man, I can't remember the fourth one. I'm going to kick myself. But anyway, they were doing all this mescaline out in the desert and coming up with essentially what ended up becoming like a UFO cult, the first ever. And uh, one of the... <laughs> there's some dinner party at Walt Disney's house. And Walt Disney's wife had made these oatmeal raisin cookies and gave one to, I think it was George Hunt Williamson. And he's like, takes a bite of it. And he's like, what did you put in these cookies? And she's like, oh, the oatmeal and raisin, there's some cinnamon, whatever. And he's like, oatmeal. Wow. And he's like, freaks out. And he's acting all weird. And like they all made comments that they thought he might be an alien who's never had an oatmeal cookie before. <laughs> Turns out he's just tripping on mescaline real hard. <laughs> so yeah, it came up at Walt Disney's house that happened. Hmm. So yeah, you could go really deep on Walt Disney. Oh right? yeah. For well, sure. The whole Club thirty three. That's, that's I was gonna dark. bring that up too. I don't know how real it is. Uh, who obviously, knows? But who knows? that is uh that's a rabbit hole that yeah. will blow your mind. Yeah, and the the new Mouseketeers when like Christina Aguilera and mm -hmm. uh, Britney Spears and all of them were on the new Mickey Mouse Club. Like that, that's how they got brought into the celebrity sex trafficking thing for kids. Wow. And that's why they're still relevant today because they basically have been. Right. It's like the trade. Like we'll make you a mega star. But if. you have to be, like, put through this horrible fucking experience as a kid. We're going to have to do an episode on Disney. Yeah, it, it would require That's a little smart. research. You wouldn't want to wing it, because they, yeah, they have really rich it. lawyers. Yeah, I wouldn't want to wing it. <laughs> Jack, we, we may have said too kid. much already. You know, it's <laughs> nothing that hasn't already been said, but... Right. Like, you I mean, just yeah. want to get it right, but... Joke's on them, they ain't getting shit. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You gonna get some debt? <laughs> Do me the favor. Yeah, I'm telling you, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, Disney's weird, man. There's a lot of weird stuff. But the cartoon thing with the dicks always. <laughs> Even at like 14, I was like, yeah, that's a little tasteless. <laughs> I get it. And I laughed at it, but it's like, eh, I probably wouldn't have done that. Yeah, that's that's good. The Walt Disney stuff's up there too, with the Rugrats one for being my like my favorite. But not so much the darker stuff, but like the, the dicks. <laughs> <laughs> not the sex trafficking. The dicks. So it ended on a good note though. I don't think you've ever seen the T V show Bluey. No. I got I know it. you have. Uh -huh. Did you know that they hide wiener dogs in every episode? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a play on hiding dicks in Disney cartoons? I don't know. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> It's on the Disney. Dude, that is second level. Really? I hate dogs. That is the most impressive <laughs> prank that you could fucking pull. <laughs> it's it is totally appropriate. Right. It's content and age appropriate. Hiding wieners. But so they hid wiener dogs in there. God damn it. <laughs> You're rocking my world, man. <laughs> They hid wiener dogs in there because the parents get tired of watching it. Yeah. And it gives them something to look for. Everyone's and looking for a wiener. For everyone's looking for a wiener dog. In the I'm going to put Bluey on when I go upstairs. And just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh -huh. a magnifying glass. Out. I'm like, I found the wiener. Pause play. Pause play. Pause. And when we end, I'll show it to you. Like every episode That's in like the bushes. Or That's brilliant. They'll be in the kitchen or whatever and. In the window seal, there's a little squeaky toy that's a wiener dog. The greatest heroes never know how appreciated they are. <laughs> Not all heroes wear capes. Some of them draw in wieners. <laughs> that's, that's terrific. Oh, that's man. terrific. I had no idea. There you go. I blew his mind twice tonight. Yeah. Good. yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. We appreciate you joining us again. Yes. Good time. I look forward to future times again. Any, anytime, man. Give me the call. Call me up. Now you're calling me up to the big leagues. Oh, no. I No. You're moving on to bigger and better things. We're no, still in the just, garage. Just different things. Anyway, yeah, anytime. This is it's always fun.
This was more lighthearted than the last time I was here. There was some pretty heavy, heavy stuff I was laying on. Not sure if the world was ready. <laughs> One of these times we'll have you on and we won't talk about anything weird. Yeah, the next time, make a note of this. <laughs> the next time you're on, we will just do something fun. You know, just you know, like I. Which I'm not saying this wasn't fun. I enjoyed. No, the show absolutely. Out of it, but I'm I'm yeah. with you though. Like how, like movie recall, like I can talk about movies forever. Oh yeah. There we go. If we don't talk about movies enough on this show, we might have a movie ded or yeah. episode dedicated to movies. I could definitely talk movies with Jason. <laughs> hey. I don't know how many episodes have. <laughs> Slowly spiraled into <laughs> movie dedication. <laughs> you had this conspiracy theory trend brewing for a minute too. Like it's been getting progressively more prevalent. Well, I, I thought it'd be fun to do something a little different, just to. I just I would hire a different research guy. Yeah, somebody Definitely. that actually. <laughs> or at least hire one. <laughs> that would work too. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> all right. Jason needs to get out of here. We're gristled up. Always. Thank you to the Woods Event Center and Bar. I didn't wear my shirt tonight. I wore. I wore my gristle. We. You wore the throwback. The yeah. OG. The OG. <laughs> Don't be upset, Court. I so almost didn't even wear a shirt. You're lucky. I got pants on too. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for joining again. us. Oh shit. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I've been getting all worked up lately. <laughs> Sean got me all geeked up on that. We need to change things up on the end. I just it's another one you didn't get your way. <laughs> Cash <Cash-tern. laughs> turn. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Damn it, Sean. Yeah. He's not even here and he's screwing us up on the finish. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> well, as always. <laughs> I'm Cody. I'm Caleb. And uh I'm not sure. <laughs> you hear it here. You heard it here. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. Deuces. <laughs>